When it comes to mathematics, and I've said this before, the journey to the finish line is always slow and steady. You're making a steady progress forward, but you're always taking a few steps back. And with that, I welcome you to this video. We're looking here at a review of a topic we've seen previously, except here we're talking about graphing the roots of complex numbers. We've addressed complex numbers and their roots, but here we'll be looking at a single example with regards to its graphing. And it would be an excellent review video for an excellent pre-calculus topic. You know that a complex number is z is equal to a plus minus bi or you can even say x plus minus yi. It doesn't matter how you annotate it. And then you know a complex number can be converted into a polar or its trigonometric form where you have something like this z is equal to r and then you have cosine theta plus i sine theta where the r represents the modulus theta values here represent the argument of this complex number and if you were to open up this by means of this product operation you could always end up back to your original complex number in this general form in this video our complex number is one plus i we have to graph it and we have to find the cube root of this complex number so we know based on the de moivre's theorem n value here equals three we also know that to calculate the root of a complex number, we have this formula. The cube root here specifically for this complex number, or you would say the nth root for the general formula. Let's generalize this formula for this introduction. The nth root of a complex number is equal to the nth root of your modulus. And you're going to multiply that by this item or the set of items within the parentheses being shown over here. Cosine theta plus 2 pi k over n plus i times sine 2 pi k plus theta over n. You can see over here your index of your root shows up here in the formula. The index of the root shows up in the modulus and it shows up here in terms of being applied to the argument. You know the theta here is again the argument of your complex number and then you see a k value over here. k value with regards to roots is always a value which starts from zero and it proceeds up to n minus 1. So if you're looking here at a cube root of this complex number which is the goal because I've written here n is equal to 3, we know our values for k are going to be 0, 1, and 2. These 0, 1, and 2 will represent the itemized roots of this complex number 1 plus i. Our complex number is 1 plus i. We have to find the cube roots and then we have to graph it. To convert that general form into a polar trigonometric form, that has to be the first step. We have to determine the modulus and we have to determine the argument. You know when you're looking at 1 plus i, you're looking at a coordinate pair which looks like 1 comma 1 and you can graph it out into a right triangle. You have a 1 in terms of the x, 1 in terms of the y, then you must find this r value and you know you can do a square plus b square is equal to c square and r here equals root 2. You have to find the argument which is your theta. Theta is always equal to inverse tan y over x. The y value divided by the x value which would be here inverse tan or arc tan 1 over 1 or arc tan of 1 and you know that happens to be pi over 4. Now we have everything we need to convert this general form into the polar form or the trigonometric form. The trigonometric form is represented in the following way. Z is equal to R which is root 2. You have a cosine theta which is a pi over 4 plus I sine theta which is a pi over 4. If you were to open up this parentheses and multiply everything you'll end up back to this right here 1 plus 1 or you can say 1 plus i because the i will retain and multiply with the 1. Anyhow, this is what we need to start this out. The next item we need is now to determine the cube root of this complex number. The most difficult part over here, in my opinion, is finding the cube root of this modulus. But you have to do it correctly. We know here our modulus is root 2, but look at it as 2 to the power of 1 or 2. Now do the cube root of this and you'll get 2 to the power of 1 or 6 and that gives you the sixth root of 2. Don't make the erroneous mistake here of looking at a root of 2 and just putting a 3 over here because you're now looking at a cube root of a 2. It's not the sixth root of 2. What you have to do is look at the cube root of your r, but if r represented a root 2, the cube root of root 2 must be sixth root of 2. And this right here is a mistake frequently made. Our eventual goal for this video is to graph the cube roots of that complex number 1 plus i. Up till now we've converted that general form into that polar trigonometric form and we've also computed the cube root of that modulus. Now what we have to do is apply the de Moivre's theorem 
formula for the calculation of these cube roots. The procedure will go as follows and that's why we were talking about those k values. You know we have three k values because we have cube roots, three, so therefore we must have three k values, zero, one, and two. Another interesting fact is since we have an n value here of three because that represents the index of this root, if you did 360 divided by three, you have 120 degrees. Each cube root will be 120 degrees apart from the next. Anyhow, let's apply it in that formula which I presented earlier. Using this form we have right here, we have the sixth root of this two. I'm gonna multiply with that formula I presented earlier, two pi k plus theta over n for both the cosine and the sine components. We have two pi k here, k value is a zero, plus theta which is pi over four, which is 45 degrees, divided by three plus i sine 2 pi times the k value which is 0 here pi over 4 over 3 and we have to calculate that now the next one we again have this sixth root of this 2 we have cosine 2 pi here the k value is a 1 plus pi over 4 divided by 3 plus i sine 2 pi k value of 1 plus pi over 4 over 3 and we're coming down to the k value of 2 we're going to have a cosine over here 2 pi times this 2 which is the k value here of 2 plus pi over 4 over 3 plus i sine 2 pi times 2 plus pi over 4 over 3. All we have to do is now do the computations we take this item here multiplied with that we take that item and we multiply with this and likewise what we'll do is we'll post the values over here i've done the computations and i've placed them over here we have 1.0842 plus 0.29051i for the first root for the second one we have 0.7937 it's a negative value plus 0.7937i for the third value we have minus 0.29051 minus 1.0842i you have to do this in a good manner take the sixth root of two and save it into your memory then you do each of these computations and multiply it with your memory recall here you'd have a two pi times a zero which would zero out but you really have a 45 divided by three likewise same here here you would have a 360 plus 45 divided by three here you'd have a 720 plus 45 divided by 3. And each of these angle values or radians would be 120 degrees from the next. This right here would be 15 degrees because 45 divided by 3 is a 15. Then the next must be 120 degrees away. This would be 135 degrees. And this would be another 120 degrees away and 255 degrees. But then you end up with a very good set of values over there. Now our last part is to actually graph it out. So let's make that graph. To graph these set of roots, this is my root one root two root three and each of these roots has a form as you can see of a complex number z is equal to a plus minus b i or you can say x plus minus y i each of those roots that you see is of that form you have a constant or a real value component and then you have an imaginary number component here a and x are my real number components b i and y i are my imaginary number components and you see that over there but the graphing part is not too hard and you don't have to be accurate because we're not a graphing tool or here we're doing this by the human hand look here you have a 1 you have a 0.29 minus 0 0.79 0 0.79 you can see we have fractional values but values are generally going no higher than 2 you can just draw 1 and 2 all across and then you plot the first set of values 1.0842 and 0.29051 you can look at each of these as an x and y coordinate pair and you'll graph it that way 1.0842 is close and slightly above the one value but 0.29 is like a 0.3 you can go across and rough estimate the value to be right over here this is my first root my second root is a minus 0.7937 and a positive 0.7937 it's not going up to minus one or plus one but it's going close to the one so you can estimate it would be somewhere right over here the last root we're looking at right here minus 0.29051 and minus 1.0841 that easily puts you in the third quadrant you're going minus 0.3 across but you're going more than a minus one down this way right here what you do now is connect these dots or these coordinate pairs with a dashed line or a dotted line and what you'll end up doing is when you connect this in a circumference manner you should end up with a good circle if it was if it were to be drawn properly but remember we're drawing here with the human hand so this tells you and shows you your roots the three roots of the complex numbers each here indicated by this dot this is my root number one we'll just call that r1 here's my root number two we'll call that r2 and here's my root number three 
and we'll call that R3. These are the three roots of this complex number, 1 plus i, which you know is in this form, a plus minus bi. If someone were to ask you find the cube roots of this complex number, you would go to the series of steps that I've utilized, and then you know you're using the formula for the root of a complex number, which comes under the de Moivre's theorem. And you've heard of that in pre-calculus. It's a big component of complex numbers. So the root formula from this de Moivre's theorem very easily gives you all the tools you need to generate the roots of the complex numbers and then to graph them out. And that right there is this video completed. Thank you for watching. Have a nice day.